you got. Don't worry about what I'm showing you. When they come to my house, then I'll show you what I got. But until then, you need to leave me alone. Go ahead now. And this is how he wants us to learn when we teach, when we preach, when we go out. Let people know this stuff. Let people know this stuff. God died for us, yes, but he died for us to be free. Not bound by the way you think we should be living. Let me rephrase that. Not bound by the way you think we should be praising and dancing and preaching and teaching. Because to each one is given the measure. To each one is given the gift. To each one is giving. Everybody don't have the same thing. I love my apostle. Tom on the road back in the 80s. That little young man was back. Oh, I always wanted to be like that. Lord, back in the 80s, I, oh yeah, man, man, man. And then when God got me, I'm nowhere near that. I'm like, Lord, where is it? <laughs> he said, you're not him. He was needed for them, that's done. You're needed for them this way. Yeah. Oh my God. I gotta say, you will not see me swinging off a of chandeliers in Wall Street. They'll put me out. But I'll never be able to get the message again there. I, I will start talking dollars and cents and Jesus. Because that's what wars we want to know. How to get dollars and cents. So I'll be talking about how to get dollars and cents in the name of Jesus Christ. But you won't be seeing me telling them how to do all the other stuff. And they be like, uh, uh, uh. I would say, no, you need to invest in the kingdom by praying over your investment. Ask Jesus. That's what I will be doing in Wall Street. But you won't be seeing me in Wall Street. So why? Let me leave that alone. God brought me for a reason to this time and age. Because he said he wanted to get to everybody their way. Everybody their way, not everybody one way. He wanted to get to everybody their way, so he's using me to get you to your way. Which is God's way. But everybody want to do it one way and it can't work. You got to be versatile because the versatility of people out here. I love the word diversity because I learned how to diversify my Christianity. I learned how to diversify Jesus in me. Other words, there's enough to go around. We break that bread, we can feed everybody. Their yeah, own way. You don't like fish, but I'll break some corn. You don't like corn, but I'll break some bread. I will feed you any way I can with what you want. Not what I want, but what you want. So if you need uplifting, I will give you uplifting. If you need correction, I will give you correction. But I need to discern in the spirit of Christ what you need or want. Not everybody needs solid meat all the time. Some people need milk, even though they know they can handle meat, they still want to drink what they done ate. God bless you, Jesus. Oh, my God. But if you keep giving them meat, meat, oh. meat, 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 how they gonna wash it down? Oh my God. Where is the anointing in that? Where is the knowledge in that? Use them, Lord Jesus, have your own spirit. Yeah, I don't need milk no more, but I still like to drink it. Oh, my goodness. I might be able to digest meat, but give me some milk once in a while. Why not? Right, I grew up on milk. Why would I want some more milk? Go ahead. Go ahead. When you're going to get off the milk? When you get off the milk? Yeah, I'm going to always said. have some milk. <laughs> <laughs> they always say that's right. Jesus. This is where he's going with me. He's like, come on. Go ahead, Pastor. When you're going to get off the milk? You need to get off the milk. You need to meet. No, I like meat and milk. Why I can't help both? Holy Spirit, go ahead. But what you to tell me to limit myself to just me? That's right. No, you read the scripture bro. He didn't say throw away the milk. He said get you some meat now. You don't need the milk. You got meat, but you can always remember and keep your meat. milk. Otherwise, I'm gonna break it down. I'm not gonna go into the.
Corinthians 12 and not remember Matthew's or the walk of Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah. I love that. So if I'm learning about the genealogy and the walk of Jesus Christ, that's milk, and then I get into the gifts of the Spirit, that's meat. I'm, a, I'm not going to get the gifts of the Spirit and forget about the milk that I had. But I'm going to say, oh, forget about the genealogy of Jesus and his walking and his Jerusalem and his infant, his triumphant infantry, in, infantry into Jerusalem. I'm going to forget about all that. I'm going to forget about the, the beatings and the, 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 the cross. Because that's m milk. Ah, yes, no. hey, and I'm going to just fix myself on the terrestrials and the extraterrestrials and the beings and the third heavens and the heavens and the, and, and, and the revelation. And forget about the... No! I need my milk. Thank you, Jesus. With my meat. God bless you. They go together. That's right. Bless him, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know where I get off from that. That's all right. right. That will you. I like that. I always wind up somewhere else. That's all right. We in Sunday school. We not preaching. That's all, all right. right. Go ahead now. It's a Sunday school. Top it down, Lord. Go ahead now. You, 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 your will. Where we at? Verse 27. Go ahead now. But a certain fearful looking, but a certain fearful looking for, ju for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. Don't be an adversary of the man of God. Listen to that. He that despised Moses, Lord, died without mercy unto two or three witnesses. It's a book that said let every word be established. But see, with Moses, Lord, they just die. No mercy, no if, ands, or buts, no reason together. You just was stoned to death or killed. But because of Jesus, uh -huh. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is three witnesses, okay, there you go. Oh my God. we are redeemed. I like this. Jesus. Of how much so a punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God? And have counted the blood of the covenant where where he was sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Yes. For we know that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. Uh -huh. I will recompense or pay back, yeah. saith the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. There you go. I don't need you judging me. I don't need you worrying about why I don't sing, why I don't shout, why I don't dance. I don't need God to deal with me. You just give me knowledge of heaven. My job is to just feed you the word of God, guide you and lead you into all truth, not to judge and beat you up and tell you, no, I let the Bible do that. But what he wants you to know is many people are not dwelling in the assembly of the brethren because of the brethren. Because of the brethren. Many do not want to come into the assembly because of the assembly of us. We come into the assembly and we are hurt. So why come amongst the assembly of the brethren when the brethren are the ones that persecute? Brethren means leaders as well. Brethren means those around you as well. So I'm saying don't let that be a reason for you not to come. Keep coming because God will fix it. He separates the wheat from the tear. But we need to stop it. Because it's inside the church that's stopping the people from coming to the church. It's your neighbor talking behind your back. It's your neighbor scattered out of your name. It's your neighbor that's jealous about you. It's your neighbor that, that don't like you. It's your neighbor that's trying to cause all kind of confusion. So it's the assembly that needs to get right. And the only way they can do that is with sound doctrine. 
kind of teaching will make a person change. This kind of teaching will make a person realize what's going on and what's wrong and how they can become an asset to the assembly. So from now on, we're going to be an asset to the assembly by showing love, peace, joy, tranquility, understanding, humility, everything of the fruits of the spirit and more with love and smile and laughter and joy. This is what the assembly of the brethren wants. Peace, love, joy, happiness. They don't want to come into the assembly and everybody's all mad and mean and ruckus and disgusting. Order. I got a text just last night. Uh, I love your church. Why? It's order. It's order. It's order. Sometimes it's chaotic. But it's chaotic in order. You don't understand that. It's chaotic, but it's in order. Why? Because I'm in it. It could be chaotic, but as long as it's in order, it's all right. Because they were chaotic in the upper room, but they were in order. It was chaotic. They thought they were drunk and ugly and crazy, but they were chaotic, but they were in order. God moves in order. It could be chaotic to you, but it's in order. It's God moving. <laughs> I love how he ministers to me. You never heard that before. Order and chaos. Yeah, that's right. Line up in the water. <laughs> Somebody said, how could that be? Ask Joshua. We talked about it. They went around the walls of Jericho in order. And the seventh day was chaos. Everybody yelled and screamed and the walls came down. Everybody was chaotic. But they took the city because they were in order. That's it. They were in order, but it was chaotic. You think it wasn't let like the walls come falling down all over the place? That's chaotic. That city falling to pieces and everybody running around in the city being slain and killed and, and, and thrown out and burned up. That ain't chaotic. But it was order. It was an army and it was order. They ordered the army to move. So it was chaotic, but it was order. So we have chaos, but it's order. That's what a person texts me. Your church is always in order. God bless Jesus. And they're going to stay that way, not because of me, but because of God. That's it. God has it like it means to to, to, to rule and yeah. set order as a child. Good job. Yeah. You might see people you think in here run over. They don't run over because they respect who's in charge. The only way a person can run over you is if they don't respect you. If they respect you, then whatever they do is not running over you. I learned wisdom from God. He said, before you open the doors, I'm going to teach you all things you need to know to keep them doors and keep everybody. And I sat there and I said, Lord, what is it? He said, don't worry about a thing. You're the leader. Let it go. Never underestimate your power, your calling, Authority, your anointing. If you know, you know then what you're worried about. At the end of the day, where am I? Here. Where are they? Alright? So who's in authority? Alright then. So nothing change. It's just a few minutes. <laughs> a few minutes. But that few minutes is liberating souls, liberating people, changing lives. That's why I sit back and allow them few minutes because it's all about the people. It's not about me. I wouldn't care less if I never did a thing. As long as the people are praising and getting what God wants for them. Because my job is the people. Not me. That's what 
what I learned the Lord showed me. He said, that's why you have to deny yourself. Forsake all others and yourself and follow me. It's not easy, but I have to. Forsake all others. You can ask my wife. Our house got built this high. I forsake myself for God. God got not one bill in this church. Thank you, Jesus. Because I will forsake all others and me for God. That's it. You want that new pair of shoes? Oh, I gotta pay my church bill. Sorry, honey. I will forsake for God. And that's why we had an agreement in it before we got married. Amen. God will God. She agreed. She'll give me her clothing money to pay the bills for God. Jesus. And if you can't do that, you don't need to be in church. Leading anything. The leader needs to be the first partaker and everything I've got goes into the ministry. So don't tell me to separate my from the church. I can't do it. Because I am the church. I will move in and sleep in the church if I have to. I'll get me a blow up bed, and blow it up, and pump it up, and put it there, and sleep there, and pay the rent, and fix the light, and, and go to work, and come back and stay. I don't mind. I got a blow up bed that's not used, still in the box. I don't need no TV because I'm in the presence of the Lord. He's my TV. But believe me, stuff happens when I'm in his presence. Chairs start moving, tables start turning. <laughs> No, it's not. Come on down. I mean, uh -huh. like, and I got a mic. Shoot, oh man, I've been here forever. What? You don't need nobody. Uh -huh. <laughs> In the park. Shoot. If I drum set, whenever I get bored, I hit the drum. <laughs> Make some noise. I'm serious. Because because this is this is this is what God does. If you want to get into ministry and have your own, you got to be able to forsake whatever you had before. Car, bank account, house, whatever, job. This is real. You might I'm gonna tell you one story. I don't like telling my business, but I, when I got in ministry and, and opened up my doors, I lost two jobs. Because of God. Well, because of the world, but because I chose God. So if you're not willing to lose and give up everything, you don't need to own a church. You don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be a minister. You got to give up everything because you will be tested. You will be tested. Do you really want Jesus? Do you really want what he got for you? Then you got to give up everything when it comes. Without, 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 without a question. No compromise. I'm sorry, Miss Manager, but I cannot compromise. I will not be here tomorrow because I can't be here. But you know you're going to lose $20,000. Oh, well. I'd rather lose that than my, my soul because I made a promise to God that I would do his work. Until he establishes what needs to be established, I cannot do what they want me to do. Now that he's established and he set forth some people and some principles, now I can, but in the beginning, I could not. Because I have to build his kingdom on earth as it's in heaven. That's what he put us here for. Why did I get off from him? He keeps taking me places. I love the Lord. And this is why people don't like. Because I don't, I give you this doctrine the real way. The devil doesn't like it. It's not comfortable for him. If somebody could sit under this for an hour, they must be holy. Must be righteous. 
must love the Lord. Because you cannot sit under the glory and the anointing like this for an hour and hate the Lord. It won't work. It would go. Or you might sit and not come back the next week. Because you're tired of it. Many people do that. I say, Lord, why they don't come back? Because they can't accept the word. They can't accept the word. They can't accept it. I said, God, then why you put me here for they can't accept it? Because those that can accept it is greater than those that can. Huh? He said, yeah, because scarcely will I write to speak. So I come for the scarcity. I don't come for the, I come for the skips. Those that long and thirst for me. That's what he comes for. And that's what he prays. So I'm saying, Lord, well, what are we going to do about this? Stand. See this over here, the Lord. Then you got the little slew foot always talking to you. We need to go through it this way, that way. No, man. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I am not trying to swindle people. I am not trying to quick fix schemes. I ain't trying to burn any brain off some stuff. Stupid. <laughs> ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. My car will supply all my needs of going to visit glory. I told you, be careful out there. You might think it's over, but it's not. There's still a lot of Jim Jones and Waco, Texas out there. Them coats are alive and well. Be careful. Be careful. They not teaching sound doctrine. It may sound good, but it ain't good. You get caught up in something you can't get out. I'm free. Nobody has a hold on me. Nobody can control me. Nobody. Because God is in, in, in my life. And this is how we got to be. We can have people dictate to us what we are, where we going, what we... Only, you know, by law, we let the Lord do the law. Of course, we never obey, disobey the law. We always, dis we always listen to the laws of God and things like that. But as far as you telling me that when I need to get up and when I need to sit down and when I need to clap and when I need to roll, stupid. You can't tell me when I need to do something. I know what I need to do in Christ. God might give out the you good and suggest. But if I do, you're gonna judge me. And if I don't, you're gonna judge me. So what's the point? Judge you not. You're gonna judge me for doing it. Oh, he ain't doing it. You know, I ain't even been judged. And I'm gonna leave it there. I learned something uh recently. Because I watch TV and stuff like that. It's channels and I learned something. This lady today on the news was uh, what do you call uh, uh, one of them dancers, and she said that's all she do. She get up in the morning and she love to dance and exercise and be happy and have joy. And then I said to myself, that's right. Who are you to tell me I can't dance? So I come into church and I'm dancing and I first thing I hear. <laughs> they ain't in no spirit. Oh. That ain't real. That phony. That's crazy. So you gonna tell me that lady that get up in the morning and do her dance every morning? She got that's wrong. Nope. So if they can do it, why can't I? Amen. And I'm in the house of the Lord rejoicing. When I was in the street, I ain't had to have the Holy Ghost to go to the club and dance. So why I come in the church, I got to have the Holy Ghost to dance. Come on now. Wow. What? Wow. Because, come on. And this is what made me so mad with me. I'm like, wait a minute. I used to hustle and tango and labada, labamba, whatever, labada. In the, in the street and two step I come in the church and I can't do nothing <laughs> uh, something wrong with that picture <laughs> something wrong